Hello everyone and welcome back to Painting with Martin. Today we are going to be painting some miniatures from the board game Company of Heroes. It is uh, a game that is published and designed by Bad Crow Games and it was released a few years ago on Kickstarter very successfully with um, a lot of backers. And uh, it features pretty much a, uh, it's a standard, well, it's not really standard, it is a very, very unique uh, conflict war game set in the setting of World War II, and which pits one uh, player against another, and you can also play co-op against another team. You can play an army either as uh, the Russians, the Americans, the British, and two German factions. Today we're going to be t taking a look at the British which is a very interesting faction, and is, of course, Company of Heroes is based on the computer game with the same name. It's a really, really good game, and um, today we're going to be, as I said, looking at the British. And the British has some very interesting uh, miniatures. Uh, today we're going to be looking at one of them called the Bren Carrier. Uh, Bren Carrier was a universal kind of like armored personnel transport, but it was also used for many other trans uh, other many other things such as machine guns and in the game you can also upgrade to a flamethrower dealing extra flame damage to infantry and buildings and so on and so forth. So today we're going to be looking at this one. I already have two of them pre-painted because I'm going to be doing this in three stages as normally. First I'm going to put the base coat on it and then I'm going to shade it with given some uh, some definitions and finally some highlighting finishes or finishing touches. And uh, with that said, I've actually put this um, uh, little miniature on uh, some blue tack and a Citadel painting, well, utility. Uh, so I can hold the miniature without actually having to touch it while I'm painting it. I've also primed the miniature uh, using a British armor coat uh, primer. I will link it uh, to what I'm using in the description of the video. And uh, if you don't have that, you can also use any black primer that works really well. As you can see, it looks already quite okay, uh, f apart from the reg regular undercoating of the, of the uh, this is the, what it looks like, that, that kind of like paint under it, and also says what it actually, what it actually does, it says carry underneath. So that's a really good way of, from Bad Crow Games that they actually designed the game that they, some people said like, oh, well, I'm gonna know what, what tank is Sherman, which, which tank is a Tiger and so on. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so they designed, uh, so like, okay, great, we're going to put the name of the uh, unit um, under the model. So um, what we're going to do first is that we're going to uh, paint this, um, the base color of this little uh, transport thing, which is a really neat model. And we're going to be using uh, Vallejo's, um, Vallejo colors, uh, bronze green. And I've already put it up in my wet palette over here, as you can see over over here. And I'm going to be using it. It's quite thick to begin with. So uh, I'm going to be using it, diluting it a little bit with about 50-50 water and covering the model in two thin layers. Um, if you want to skip ahead in this one, you can actually do one layer, but I strongly recommend that you actually do one uh, uh, two thin coats. And you can use pretty much any brush you want for this one. I'm using an old brush, I've been using for two uh, paints, and it's a Winsor Newton Cotman brush, uh, number three. Uh, and it's quite an old one. I'm gonna start putting some paint on this one. I'm using it with fairly neat strokes. As you can see, it's already starting to look a little bit better. I'm covering the entire miniature with this, um, with this paint, except for the tracks. We're taking good care not to touch the tracks. The reason for that is that we want to track in another color. And there's some things underneath the tank here, almost some, some tools and handles. We're also going to be painted this one in bronze, uh, bronze green. And if you get some, uh, some paint on the tracks, it's not a big deal. Uh, we can fix that later on. Let's, let me just attach the miniature a little bit further. Okay. And I touch the miniature here with my hands, and that happens. Um, so the Bren Carrier is a British um, kind of tank or armored carrier. Um, in the game, 
it comes with a machine gun, um, and you can upgrade, as I said, to a flamethrower. This does this model does not fit um, come with a flamethrower as we're looking at it, uh, but it's it's a nice way to spend both manpower and fuel to build it because it's a vehicle. And in the game, you spend you have uh, several phases in the game, anything from like you know movement to firing and supply. So in the movement phase, you spend command cubes, and those command cubes are green uh, are in your color, of the, uh, and spend them to move your units. You can spend, uh, I believe, in the first edition rules, it's only three command cubes per model or per per squad or per per tank. And um, then in the second edition rules, I believe they changed it. And then and you spend them to move your units around the board and you spend them to build uh, fortifications. Don't forget here to get inside the miniature. I'm going to see if I can, yeah, like this. All these little small parts. So you spend it to simply moving in and out of buildings, putting up uh, maybe some machine gun positions, setting up your, your mortars and machine guns, getting in and out, outside of buildings. And after you've done, after each one of the players have done all their things like that, you move on to the next stage in which you will shoot and you will roll the, you will not roll the dice, you will assign the dice. So damage, damage here is a deterministic Unlike for many other war games, you roll lots of dice and see what happens. Now, here you know if you're going to hit or not. But if you're in a building, you might get some cover. And um, uh, there, in this case, there are four kinds of damage types. Um, there is infantry damage, done by machine guns and infantry. There is armor dice, done by tanks, anti-armor anti guns, as well as uh, high explosive and flame damage. Flame damage is lethal because it negates the saves uh, in most cases. High explosives can be saved against, uh, but it can also do a lot of damage. So after you've done assigned all the damage, uh, you can then go into the supply stage in which you will capture points, get income, and buy more models, putting them up on the board. So it's a very neat way of actually playing the game because um, you can. There's a lot more strategy than many other war games in which it's just pure luck, and I really like that. So as you can see here in the model, it's starting to look fairly a little bit better already. I hope you can see this. And don't forget to do all the parts over here. So well, that one is done. I'm also going to be switching this model around and I know I'm going to touch this model and I'm going to put this on the other side. Normally you should do this while this uh, while it's while it's dried and see if we can do that. So wait until it's dried. And then I want you to paint the tracks. For the tracks, we're going to use a, another uh, Vallejo paint, and we're going to use a paint called um, Flat Brown from Vallejo, and it has a little bit of reddish brownish color, so it will simulate mud very well. Uh, you can also mix 50 50 water into this, this one, so it's quite thin paint. and. This one I'm using a smaller brush, you can uh, uh, double zero, but you can easily use just a size three brush as well. And I'm putting them across the tracks here. Making sure I get even coverage on all the tracks. As you can see, it's starting to look a lot better already. Uh, if you miss some spots, don't worry about it. We're going to cover it with some shade afterwards. Don't forget to get some all the parts of the tracks here. Something like that. Oh, it's wiggles a bit. 
And while that one dries, I have also uh, pre-painted some the next stage. So it's already dried in my next miniature, but you're going to have to wait for your miniatures to dry. And I'm going to go on to the next one here. Next one here is already dried and painted. This is what it looks like when it's fully done. And what I'm going to do here before we start shading it is that I'm going to dr um, do some dry brushing with a color called Russian Uniform. As you can see, some of the pigments here in Vallejo colors actually get to the bottom of the, the paint bottle. So what you do here is you give it a good shake. I'm going to do it outside the camera so it doesn't the camera doesn't shake so much. And then I'm going to put it on my wet palette. And dry brushing is a really useful technique because it allows you to give some weathering effects to your model. Um, and when you do this, you simply take an old paintbrush and you simply put it on some kitchen towel and wipe most of the brush, most of the paint off until you're left with a dry, kind of like a dry brush. Uh, hence the name, the name dry brush. And what you do here is simply put it across the entire miniature to give some some shading and definition. And this will change the color of the miniature a little bit, giving some weathering, some dusty weather stuff before we do the, the shade. And I try to put, I don't know, all the raised areas here. And I'm going to show you what it looks like in just a little bit. And it's, as you can see here, it looks like this. Fortunately, the camera is a little bit low. Let's see if I can lower the camera a little bit. Like that. Okay, and you don't really have to wait for it a lot to dry very quickly. Um, we're gonna use a, I'm gonna raise the camera here a little bit. I can raise. Oh, there you go. Uh, for the shading, for the next part of the stage, I'm going to use this one because this one is still drying. I'm going to shade the, the entire miniature with, except for two parts. Um, the first part, I'm going to use something called uh, sepia wash. It's from uh, Vallejo. You can also use the same wash from, it's called seraphim sepia from, um, from Citadels. I have a selection of paints. And I actually give it a good shake, and I put it out over here on my drape on my wet palette. And the same thing with the other uh, colors. Let's see if I can give it. Yeah. There you go. It is actually this paint over here. I'm going to give it a give it a little, little bit. I mix it a little bit bit with water, simply because it's a little bit too strong to put on as it is. So if you have this kind of color. A little bit too diluted you can brush a little bit off on a piece of paper and i want you to start covering the entire miniature except the tracks for it um, i'm holding the miniature now uh, hopefully that will be okay because i'm holding the tracks and i'm covering the entire miniature with it and i want really want you to pay attention that it goes into all the nooks and crannies of the miniature letting it pool in the recesses uh, to really give that definition and you can see here from the dry brushes we've done before the raised edges are shown even further um, and that's why I did the dry brush before some people choose to do the dry brush after the shade and that's perfectly fine as well in this case I chose not to do it and I'll explain a little bit of why but as I said it's perfectly fine to do it as well after giving it in all these parts here all the little machinery parts. And the interior of the model. See, now that's done. Now, as I said, we are also going to paint the tracks. The tracks are going to be painted. I'm holding it like this now. I'm washing the brush with some, uh, some water in my water pot, shown outside of the camera. Give it a nice clean, clean brush. And I'm actually going to shade the tracks with some, um, some, if you can see here, 
some uh, black wash uh, from the layer. Uh, the equivalent of this one will be null noil in in Vallejo, uh, in Citadel, and I'm going to be shading these ones here. These tracks, giving them some some weathering and definition as well. Some shades, and that one is drying. We're going into the final stage. It's a quick video showing you how you can do this in one this an entire video with an, an entire you can do the entire model in simply much around half an hour maybe an hour with drawing time included and i have a fully shaded miniature here as you can see it has some shades on it um i hope yep and you can see here that the tracks here are much shaded compared to the bright color of the um, of the flat brown before so what we're going to do now is that we're going to paint some details and we're going to start by painting the road wheels and for the road wheels we're going to choose the road wheels are these ones uh, the road wheels and also some um, some tools road wheels more importantly we're going to start by giving the road wheels a coat of german gray and the reason i'm not using total black for this one black is a little bit too strong um, so I'm giving a good shake. Um, it's turning my black uh, my wet palette around, so I'm not mixing it accidentally with some of my other paints. Should have done this before, but this is my second video that I'm only doing on YouTube ever. So if you find any mistakes that I make or funny things that I should have have done, uh, please put them in the comments. Um, I'm using this one undiluted and. You can perfectly do this one diluted as well. That's perfectly fine. And I'm going to use a fairly small brush for this. And I'm going to use a, a Winsor New uh, Newton Cotman triple uh, zero brush. Um, and I'm going to use it, put in some paint on here, wiping it off a little bit and I hope you can see this I'm putting it I'll put the paint on first and then I'll show you it's on the road wheels just on the side of the road wheels on each side here It's going to be on these road wheels here, here and here. Um, can be a little bit tricky to reach. Don't worry if you get some paint, some paint splashed on some other parts. This is only designed to make the table, the image look good, fairly good on the table here. Won't win you any competitions, but it was going to look you a lot better than an unpainted one. So both of these looks fairly okay to me. And don't forget, there is also a road wheel on top of the miniature here as a spare one. So you want to paint this one as well. Looking and look quite good, okay. And I'm going to go around. I'm going to paint the uh, the tool. There is a spade here. Let's see if I can lower the camera a little bit. Oh, 
hopefully you can see that. And there's also a tool here, some kind of pit on or something like that, like that. And if you want to, you can also paint the machine gun with this color. Do apologize for the quality of the video. It's I only have a film camera. Maybe in the future I'll be able to upgrade it. Hopefully you can see that. Maybe if I'll put it up back on the stick here, I'll be able to show it a little bit better. So we've done the road wheels now. We've done on both sides. We have done the spare road wheel as well. And we've painted the machine gun and the tool on the back, um, the metal tool parts at least. Let's see if I can raise this one up a little bit. Maybe it'll be easier. Probably not. And but the tools also need tool hand tool handles. And tool handles, I'm going to be using a um, another um, another color from Vallejo for called. Um, beige brown you can also use flat earth for that it's perfectly fine as well give it a good shake before you and the tool handle in this case a spade I'm going to be using it here the tool handle here giving it a little bit of de definition as well and that's that one. Maybe I can increase the lighting here. Ah, that's a bit better, I hope. There you can see the, the road wheels, the spare road, and also the handle and this one over there. Um, with this one said, um, we're also going to do a small light dry brush of uh, the tracks. And the tracks will be, I'll switch it around. Um, tracks were made a little bit of metal, so uh, I'm going to take an old paintbrush, any paintbrush with a flat brush, and use it and put some natural steel from the layer uh, on the uh, road wheels uh, the uh, the road tracks putting it out here undiluted this is a fairly good color it's a really good color I really enjoyed and just like we did before with the, the other weathering effects of Russian uniform I'm going to be putting it out over side over here, taking it most of the t the, the stuff out. I'm going to using only the raised edges here. Only the sides, if I can. Just very very light, give it that fine metallic finish. You can also do that. See, and be careful to not oh, I'm going to use this one here I'm going to hold them up miniature and then I'm going to use the same metallic finish on the machine guns and the metal parts the metal parts being this one here that is now dried as well as the handles here as well as the handles here here and this little tool as well also the machine gun. You can also dry brush the machine gun if you want to. Uh, that's perfectly fine. And just to choose to give it a little bit more color. 
and after that we have one small thing left to do when it comes to the interior of the oh, we actually have two things I'm using a size 3 brush um, with a little bit of um, of German dark grey and there is a inside here I don't know if you can see it but inside here there is a road wheel like the steering wheel I'm gonna see if you it's entirely optional I'm gonna see if I can actually get it to be painted in a little bit black I don't know if you can see that yeah maybe that like that the driver seat uh, not sorry the um, the gunner seat was in a different color uh, originally from the um, the main seat where the driver sat and that had a little bit of a lighter color if you look at the interiors of actually um, of actually um, actual footage of the um, brain carriers so there's some research on, you, on Google and the closer come I came to it was something a Vallejo color called green gray so I'm going to use the same um, brush a size uh, 3 and I'm going to be painting that one that is an entirely an optional step uh, you really don't have to I'm going to be using it neat and I'm going to be putting it over here but I think it gives a little, a little bit more definition taking good care not to touch anything else It's only the seat itself, um, not the the um, not the backrest. So with that said, and it looks quite okay now, actually. Um, but I would like to do some optional things as well, and these are entirely optional things. Um, I like small details on thing on on miniatures. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to be using. Um, A gold color, gold color paint. Should have found it before, but I'm a little bit disorganized, as my friends can tell me as well. Um, I'm going to use it on some of the ammunition. Um, this is a uh, gold color called from Vallejo. Um, it's a large brush. Uh, it's a large, so I'm going to give it a good shake. I haven't used it for a long time. I'm going to put out over here. It's a little bit too liquid. Maybe I need to shake it a little bit more. There is also, of course, a Citadel variant, if I can find it. Uh, yeah, there you go. You can use Auric Armor Layer Gold for it. Give it a good shake. Or you can use Retributor Armor. And that's the one I'm going to be using today. It's a little bit thicker and doesn't allow the pigments to go away very easily. Applying it undiluted on some of these. What I think it is ammunition racks here. I could be wrong. Which you're more than happy to tell me. I'd love to learn more about World War II in general. And just like that. 
Um, now it looks far, fairly okay. Uh, this is entirely optional next step, but I would like to give it a little bit more shading and definition uh, besides what I've been doing so far. And that means I'm going to be uh, applying some optional, um, what we call selective shading using black wash from Vallejo, like someone else we used before. There will be a link, uh, there will be a description in the description bo box, there will be all the, all the, uh, a list of all the paints that I've used. And you can use this on to selectively shade some of these areas here, like this. It will help them stand out a little bit more, such as the light over here, such as the exhaust fumes from the engine. And some of the track, some of the parts here can give it a little bit more grimy look. And it will help them stand out more. I like the selective shading way of doing things. Just on a few parts of the model. And all these tricks, all these steps that I've used on um, this brain carrier can be used on every single British armor model from Company of Heroes, the board game. Um, and for the final stage of the highlighting, I'm going to be using something called, I uh, know that's not the one, uh, it's called uh, Vallejo's Iraqian Sand, Iraq, or Iraqi Sand. And I'm going to be using it as a very, very light dry brush to uh, across the tracks, uh, not the uh, no uh, the, um, the the lower part of the model, and to give it a little bit more of a weathering effect, and that's going to be the final stage of this model before we put some varnish on it. The varnish is a way to keep the model from. Um, from actually uh, the, the paint from going away from the model. It looks like a very skin tone model, this uh, thing here. I can actually show it to you. Uh, that's what it looks like. And I'm gonna be dabbing some paints here all across it. I'm using it on a kitchen tape, a kitchen wipe over here on the side that I have on the side. I'm making sure they get most of the brush the paint's gone. It's going to be a very, very light dry brush. And that said, let's see if we can do this. It also helps to raise the edges here a little bit. Sometimes it gets a bit too strong, so it means you have to wipe it off a little bit too much more of the paint. Just across the edges here. Sometimes it's a bit got a bit too strong. So you still have to be careful there. If you find out that you've done too much of a uh, of a dry brush, please go back, put some um, some Russian uniform on it. I'm going to do that as well. I'll show you that mistakes can happen, even if you are a painter like me. I'm going to be putting some Russian uniform on the same brush. Tone it down. Tone this one down as well. And there you have it. You have a fully ready and operational brain carrier from the Company of Heroes board game. I hope that you found this tutorial how to paint British armor from the Company of Heroes board game from Bad Crow Games useful. If you like what you see here and you like um, how I'm painting videos, please give me a like. Uh, please 
subscribe if you like if you want to hear more from me and tell me in the comments what would you like to see next more of combat of heroes more of magna roma other games i'd love to hear from you thank you very much uh, for watching and uh, please go and put some paint on those miniatures <laughs>